California. I know you're going to dig this. It's the Tom Likas Show. Check this out. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. The different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 866. Thank you for joining in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And uh, what a shocker. Ooh, I'm shocked. This from the Christian Science Monitor. Now, you know nobody reads newspapers anymore, but can you imagine the Christian Science Monitor? When's the last time you saw that on the newsstand? Huh? But the Christian Science Monitor generally considered to be a reliable source of journalism. Uh, not being facetious, it actually is. So, here's the story. This economic downturn is taking a particularly hard toll on women, according to some experts. The reasons? Women spend too much. (laughs) Women never ask how much something costs. Women use credit cards, don't know what their interest rate is. Oh, I'm sure there's a lot of reasons. But here are the reasons the so-called experts are giving. Much of the downturn is focused on the real estate market, where a disproportionately large number of women work. And substantially more women than men have subprime mortgages. Really? Speaking of not asking how much the finance charge is. But experts point to another cause. Women simply earn less than men. An estimated average of 80 cents for every dollar made by a man. Even though women may not lose as many jobs as men, they are more vulnerable simply because their incomes are lower to start with at the beginning of the downturn, says Heidi Hartman, president of the Institute for Women's Policy Research in Washington, D.C. She said they're also more likely to be supporting children, so... For them, any disruption in their income is very, very serious. Who cares about men? This is serious for women. Men can roll up in a blanket and live under a freeway underpass. Historically, says here, men have been more sensitive to the ups and downs of economic cycles. That's in part because many work in manufacturing and construction. Two areas of the economy that do well in boom times, but are particularly vulnerable during recessions, according to experts. Women, on the other hand, predominantly work in more service-oriented fields, such as health care and education, which have tended to be better insulated from economic cycles. Indeed, even during most of the worst recessions of the last 40 years, job growth continued among women just not as strongly as during the boom times. That changed during the 2001 recession when women lost jobs for the first time in recent history. Heidi Hartman, the aforementioned, says, it looks like this recession women will also lose jobs because of the real estate crisis and the financial services crisis. Something like 142,000 women work in real estate compared to 42,000 men. No surprise there. That's because women don't like being told what to do. They don't like having to come into the office on time, leave on time. They'd rather have their cell phone ringing 24-7 and uh, be out all weekend long showing properties than have to be in the office Monday morning at 9 o'clock being told what to do. 
Now, you know it's true. I know it. So does everybody else. Says here, a recent Senate report found that the number of unemployed adult women increased by 20% from March of 07 to March of 08, compared with a 17% increase among adult men. Women are also disproportionately affected by the subprime mortgage crisis. Studies have shown. Maybe they should have paid their bills on time. Maybe they should have read the contract. Maybe they should have checked what that finance charge was going to be. Come on, women hate doing that. Says here in 2005, 32% of women held subprime mortgages. Compared with 24% of men, according to a report by the Consumer Federation of America. The study, politically correctly, cited women's lower wealth and income, historical barriers to credit for women. Who's refusing to lend to somebody because they're a woman nowadays? Who? Who? What woman doesn't have credit except some deadbeat? Predatory lending, boo-hoo-hoo, and women's lower confidence in their own financial abilities as possible reasons why women are more likely to receive subprime mortgages. Not our problem. Says here, Hartman believes the combination of these factors will have long-term consequences. She says, there's no question that this recession is going to weaken the ability of women to catch up to men in terms of their earnings. But other experts in women's employment see a rosier picture for women. They point out that 57% of those graduating with college degrees are women. So there's your story. The troubled economy hits women especially hard, says the headline. Should we be concerned about that? Is this relevant? Women spend too much. They have Visa cards and MasterCards, don't know what the interest rates are, and don't care to ask. They get subprime mortgages. What's the interest rate? I don't know. What am I paying per month? Two ninety nine a month. Fantastic. I'll take it. Without bothering to worry how much there is in interest or what year the interest rate goes up. I'm sh- Come on. We know why this is. Should we be concerned about this? Should we be doing studies on how hard women are being hit by the troubled economy? Do you care? Tom Likas. Who's nothing to pay for? 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. Tom. 1-800-5800-866. Likas. This philosophy and everything, man, you're the master. You're not father, you're the master. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. A story in the Christian Science Monitor says that our lousy economy is hitting women especially hard. Should we be concerned about that? Do we need a study to know this? And should we care? I, for one, don't care. I'm paying attention to my money. If you don't pay attention to your money, why is it my problem? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Jeff on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. It's Jeff. How you doing? Okay. How you doing? Hey, you're doing great. Listen, you know, we were listening to you. I got a couple guys in the car, and we were arguing about why it's important to worry about those girls with the credit cards, right? Right. Okay. Well, if it's your money, and I got stuck doing getting the married crap and go through the divorce and then pay for the kids in college crap, and they're using the credit cards, and I tell them, okay, there's a budget, and they don't care. They just use the damn thing as they feel. Then I'm concerned about where my money is going. Well, in your case, you should be concerned. I would never, and I mean never, allow a woman to handle my money. That means handle my credit cards, have access to my checking account. I simply that, that, that wouldn't was, that was a judge's order, though. allow it. Oh, so you're divorced. Oh, yeah. I went through this a while back, and I learned my lesson from this judge, and he decided he wanted to attack me because I had the money. So let me ask you a question. Are you uh, – she has your credit card, and uh, she has other ways of, of getting credit in your name? Only through my businesses that she had a percentage in at that time, thinking I was doing something good. Holy cow. And the judge goes, oh, even though you guys – she makes actually technically more money than I do – 
share percentage of my businesses. So they said, oh, you're going to use uh, part of your credit line on your businesses and also substantiate your children when they're going to college. Oh, my God. Then she decides to quit. Check this out. She quits because I have the money from the businesses that will go through it, and I can't close my DBAs or anything else because the judge had put that order in. Oh, my God. It's awful. Yeah, and it's but, stupid. I, but I, I, you I, got I, married. I you got married. Ago. You should have listened to me years ago. You got married without a prenup, didn't you? No, not for the businesses, Tom. I had the prenup, but not the businesses, baby. And I and I didn't realize that part that I should have stuck it in there. See, I tell guys to start their businesses and earn your fortune before you get married. God, Tom, you're so right on that. And then you get stuck with this credit card thing. Oh, and that's what I'm saying. In my case, I'm, I'm yeah, I, I would need to know where my money is going. I'm amazed. You can't put that. That's the thing. See, if it were fair, you just say, you know what? I'm going to give you the business, and then you start a new business. And that's what I tried to get through with the judge. And the judge said not until the children were finished in college or they're out. Outrageous. And mom teaches the daughters, once you skip a year and go back and finish again. I'm still paying for that, Tom. Unreal. Mom teaches them, skip, quit, you know. And then you wonder why these women um, are wondering why they have money problems. Because well, they got suckers like us on the outside doing something. You are also, I mean, think about it. I mean, you're paying for her new wardrobe so she can meet the next sucker. Uh, you are paying for the Jack Daniels that her boyfriend is drinking and whatever else. Oh, in the room for the college study program, which ended up being a party room. And that was 12000 bucks. Thank you very much. There we go. Yes. Outrageous. So get well, the message out to your boys out there. I'm doing you the best I it. can. Oh, I'm doing the best I can. Jeff, I wish you'd listened. Jesus. 1-800-5800, Tom, is our telephone number. Let me, just a little aside here for a moment. And I am not kidding about this. How stupid was I to get married repeatedly? How stupid was I to get divorced more than once? How stupid was I to live with women? Can I tell you something? Never, ever, ever. And, and boys, this is a lesson to you. Uh, never would I let a woman have access to my money my bank account, my credit cards, the ability to take out a loan in my name. Uh, if I were ever to be in a relationship, uh, the woman would be shut out. She could have her own bank accounts, her own credit cards, uh, her own money. She could even keep everything she makes at her job. But no way would I be giving a woman like a, let her be the additional card holder of my American Express card, Visa card, MasterCard. I wouldn't allow it. I would not have a checking account where a woman could write a check on my account, ever. Pin numbers, no, wouldn't have them. Additional cards on my ATM, no. You know, if a woman uh, wants to have money, she should get a goddamn job. And that way, later on, I don't get punished when she says I can't maintain the lifestyle to which I've become accustomed. Because what you become accustomed to, lady is that you don't have any of my money. You don't have any access to my money. You don't have any credit cards. You don't have any credit. You don't have any loans. You don't have any mortgages. Uh, you don't own any real estate with me. I have never bought real estate with a woman. Never. I've owned several houses. Never has a woman's name ever been on the deed of any property I've ever owned, and nor would it ever be. Because if the relationship ends, I'm not moving. You think that's unreasonable? Tough luck. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Doug on the Tom Likas show. Hello. And Doug hung up at the last possible minute because that's the way that works. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. And yeah, I, mean, I just can't imagine the idea that a woman could take a check with my name on it and sign her name and take out money. I just can't even imagine. I can't imagine a woman having a credit card with my name on it and taking it to the store and just saying, oh, yeah, just put those on my card. I can't even imagine it. 
I can't. The reason I came out of for all these divorces intact is because I always own my houses in my own name. Never put a woman's name on the deed, ever. They had to sign a quit claim deed in order to marry me. That was the deal. Women who live with me did not have access. They did not have the combination to the vault. They just didn't get it. And that's what you guys have to remember to do. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here comes John on the Tom Likas show. Oh, my goodness. We having a phone problem here? I don't know. Every call I pick up, they, uh, they're gone. I have no idea. Uh, I'm just going to tell you this much. Um, the, the reason I have come through uh, all of this uh, with flying colors, with my fortune intact, is simply because I've never, ever, ever given a woman access to the cash. You can ask me to buy you something. You can ask me to lend you a few bucks. Oh, but you don't get to take my uh, checking card, my ATM card, my checks, my credit cards. You don't get to uh, use my credit line or my subprime mortgage or my prime mortgage or whatever. You don't get it. If you're with me, you have your job, you have your money, I have mine. That's the way it's got to be. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Doug on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? I'm okay, Doc. Tom, I'm such an idiot. Many years ago, I used to listen to you, and I thought you were so full of crap. I thought, this guy doesn't know nothing about a good man. He has access to everything. Even my safe that had all the diamonds in the gold. I was in the jewelry business. Well, now a divorce later, a 10-year custody fight. She's trying to move and take the kid out of state. Tom, you're a genius. I wish I would have listened to you even back when I was married and happy. I should have protected myself and taken the steps that I could have taken after the fact. But I even wish I would have never got married at this point. It's just brilliant that you're giving everyone the opportunity, Tom, to, to, to not make the mistakes I did and that others made. And I appreciate, as many of us do, you out there giving the boys... Heads up, and I hope they take it while they're young and before they make the stupid mistakes I did. You know, I'm so sorry you were that arrogant and thought you knew so much more than I did back then. Uh, I'm so sorry that you didn't take my advice. Uh, you got to look at the track record. Divorced repeatedly, and I don't pay alimony. I don't pay child support. I own, uh, I own the real estate that I have owned. I have never given up a house or an apartment, a condo. Have never had to uh, uh, to pay out sums of money after it was over. I'm, I'm I, I just don't do it. Tom, I, I thought I was happy. I had money, but uh, she had a kid. Then this bipolar craziness came out, and it became a nightmare. You, I, I think you should be able to test them before you get married. There should be a test for genetic traits like that to come out. Anyway, that's my piece. Take me out old, old style with the flush, Tom. Here you go, Doug. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. The story in the Christian Science Monitor says that the... The lousy economy is hitting women especially hard. Should we be concerned about that? 1-800-5800-866. It's Keith on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, tell you, man, uh, thanks for your advice. You know, uh, I'm a long-time listener, first-time caller. Cool. Uh, for one time, you know, I got married, like, too young at the age of 20, and now uh, this bitch is hitting me up for child support. Oh, boy. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I mean, I got warned by my brothers, and my, my mom even told me not to marry her, but, you know, I did, unfortunately, but uh, I did learn my lesson. I learned it the hard way. And uh, I found out that, you know, it's cheaper paying the child support than uh, even keep her. Well, that's the whole point. I mean, I, I tell guys, even if you knock somebody up, uh, don't feel obligated to marry that person. You exactly. can be in a you can be in a kid's life. You can be involved. You can live in the same city. You can live in the same neighborhood if you need to. You can be there for the kid whenever he needs you. 
Uh, yep. But when you get married, that means you not only pay child support, you also pay vagina money. Exactly. And, and and by not marrying them, you you save yourself that risk. You don't have to share real estate with them. You don't have to pay them anything except the child support that they're legally entitled to. Exactly. And it's uh you know it's cheaper with the child support too because it's like uh, you have peace of mind not to deal with the nagging and complaining all the time. Them never being satisfied, dealing with the in laws, it's just unbelievable. Who so, wants that? The in laws are always the worst. <laughs> they always think the worst of you, and that's because they hear about you from her. Exactly. I even tell you, I'm going to tell you a story of what happened, what, what happened to me last week. My mother-in-law sprayed me with the freaking water hose. Can you believe that? <laughs> I hate that. I'm telling you, unbelievable. And she's getting me for child support. She's a dental assistant. She makes $15 an hour. Oh, no. Living at home, living at home with mommy and daddy, not paying any rent at all whatsoever. Yeah, and you can't you can't marry those lazy losers because That's later right. on you'll be paying for their lifestyle. Exactly. But uh, you I, know, Tom, the, thank you for all your advice. Noah, uh, take me out old school. Here you go, baby. One eight hundred five eight hundred tough. Save yourself the trouble. Save yourself the time. Just don't marry them. Just don't do it. Don't. Marry them. Charles on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I just wanted to know, how did you get to keep all your money if you got divorced? What about community property rules? Ah, that's what a prenup is for. Oh, you had prenups. Okay. Of course. And my prenup said there is no community property. And what about, what's this quick claim deed you were talking about? What's the... When you own a house uh, and you get married... You need to get them to sign, in addition to your prenup, you need to get them to sign something called a quit claim deed. And what that is, it, it is a document that says that she will not come after you for the house. Really? Even if she lives in it. Even if she decorates it. Even if she, you know, it, it's yours. It will always be yours. That's great. All there right, are uh, marriages, by the way, yeah. uh, there are marriages where during the marriage I bought real estate. Yeah. But I said, I'm only going to buy this real estate if you sign a quit claim deed. <laughs> I'm not Beautiful. buying it unless you sign the quick claim deed. Well, and because they want to live in the new house so badly, they'll sign anything. Yeah. Later on, they find out what they could have gotten by not signing. Yeah. Beautiful. Way to go. You don't want them to know that. That's right. Well, thank you, Tom. Charles, I'm here to help. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Tony, on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, Tom, I heard that most of the job losses in the past year, I think it's like a million jobs... We're all guys, and most of the job gains were all women. So it's the women who've been gaining the jobs in the past year, and all, the whole unemployment increase is all guys. And another thing is one of the main reasons why when you call a customer service place and it's outsourced to India and the Philippines was a way, to, uh, was a way for the corporations to bypass the affirmative action rules to hire women. That's what I heard. I don't, I don't believe that. In fact, I believe the exact opposite. I believe if you could get away with paying women less, companies would hire more of them because they want to save money. Well, I, I'm, I'm, that's probably part of it too, but I think that it's just, it's just more hassle than it's worth to hire like, uh, high school level girls to do that job. Like, can you imagine a restaurant being accused of discriminating against Mexicans? Um, yeah, I can understand that. Why would anyone do that? But the, what I heard is the, the most of the increase in unemployment is all guys in the past uh, four well, years. Well, and part of that is probably because 57% of all degrees now are going to women. College degrees, 57%. Well, it's also because the only jobs that, that are in the increase are the trivial jobs that guys would be embarrassed to do, you know. Like service type jobs. Well, one of the reasons that, that guys are losing jobs faster than women is because guys do jobs like construction. And construction is very sensitive to the recession, uh, very uh, uh, sensitive to the economy. And as the story I just read to you says, you know, women take jobs like librarian or healthcare professional or teacher. And these are jobs where they're not laying people off even when the economy goes bad. So, of course, guys who take the dangerous jobs, the economically sensitive jobs like construction jobs and stuff, of course they're losing more jobs. Absolutely. That's right. 
Okay, thanks, Tom. I thank you. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The advice you give us is worth more than money. It's worth my weight in gold. It's the Tom Likas Show. Thank you for tuning in. And I'll start with a story in the Christian Science Monitor. Of all places, the lousy economy is affecting women particularly badly. Oh, boy. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Okay. Let's go to your calls here. Mac on the top like his show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's happening? Long time, uh, first time. Doing okay, Mac. Yeah, I want to tell you a little bit about my situation. So I was 20 years old, and I had my, my son with an older woman. She was only a couple years older than me at the time, but we were on and off for five years. I finally broke it off because I was so sick and tired of all the bitching. By the way, what do I tell you about having a girlfriend at such a young age? I see you're 25 now, so when oh, you're yeah. like 18 when you met her. I was 19 when I met her, you know, young, yeah. dumb, full of, you know, you know how the saying yeah. goes. Yep. And, uh, well, it ended up happening. And, uh, so I ended up breaking up with her after about five years. And right away she picked up and moved out of the county. I tried to go to court and get, you know, get her back into the county, but, you know, she was able to hire an attorney thanks to her mom and dad having some money. May I ask why you had a kid? Uh, you know, it was stupid. I wasn't, wasn't really thinking everything through. Like I said, I was young, dumb, and full of that. What made you think that, that was a good idea? What's that? What made you think that was a good idea? Well, apparently, I wasn't thinking too much, Tom. So uh, you just accidentally knocked her up, and, you, well, <laughs> and it wasn't even an accident because you weren't using a condom. Yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. I was right. Doing, the, doing the dirty, and, dirty. And then you asked her to have the abortion, and she said no, and so there you were, stuck. I was stuck. Stuck like a rock. So so then, she, you know, we, we ended up having our, my son, and after five years, she takes off. And I tried getting her back in the county because I knew what she was up to. You know, she was making a decent living out here with us together. With our income together, we're doing pretty good. Um, she took off out of the county, making a goes to a bullcrap job, you know. And then, of course, with her living out of the county, my visitation was limited. So my child support went through the roof. You know, between child support and child daycare, I'm spending over, you know a thousand dollars a month for one child. Why are you She's spending so much? Wait, 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 wait. Why are you spending so much on daycare? Well, my daycare, because she was sending him to a place called Child Time, and that was, you know, I had to pay for half of that, which is, you know, her, combined it was about 700 and something dollars. I, had, I was responsible for half of it. So, anyways, long story short, she gives him a, she's getting $1,000 a month. She decides to move back into the county because, you know, I broke up with my girlfriend, and, you know, she had the high hopes of us probably. You had you know, another girlfriend after that? Are, uh, what are you, a glutton for punishment? <laughs> well, I'm serious. Though, Tom. I was what are you about. laughing? Wait, wait. What are you laughing about? You know, you got to keep. I'm young. I got to stay busy. Why do you need a girlfriend? Well, you know, it just uh, she was. A good You've girl. got no game. You've got no game. Oh, Tom, I get more ass than a toilet seat. No, you're getting all the ass from one ass. <laughs> well, anyway, so I broke. No, 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 no. We'll get to the next part. It's true, <laughs> isn't it? What's that? That I have no game? Right. No, I just I, I, I like to keep the keepers. I try to keep a good girl. When I find Why? Good but they're not good girls. You have a lousy track record. Well, the last one was a good one. I just decided I didn't want to be strapped down too, you know, too into a, too much of a serious relationship. That's why I took that's why I took the high route and said, okay, I'm out of here because I'd already been down the road once before and knew how it turned out. So I didn't let the uh, let it get too serious. I made sure I got out of it before it got too dangerous. Before the moving in situation happened, I was like, okay, I'm done with this one move on to being single again. So that's what I did, and uh, my son's mom got happy about that, said she's coming back into the county, which was actually beneficial for me because I'd get more time with my son, which in the long run would also help me financially because I'd have less in child support. But as soon as she found out that I wasn't ready to get back together with her, guess what she did? Of takes course! Me, takes me back to the cleaners. So now she's, you know, I had to get a second job because of child support being so high. So now she goes, oh, well, between your raise and your second job, you're going to have to spend more money on child support. You know what? I think what you need is another girlfriend and more <laughs> sex without a condom. You, what you need to do is uh, play a double header here. <laughs> and I'm willing to bet you don't use a condom every time even now, do you? Oh, I do now. Yeah, I do. Absolutely. Every now time? 
Every time. One hundred percent of the time. I don't have one girl that I'm being that I'm that I'm with sexually just by herself. What would that have to do with anything? Well, now that I'm with other women, I play it safe. I don't want to take any. But if you're with one woman, why would you not use a condom? Well, I learned my lesson the first time. So I do use protection now. So even when you had a girlfriend, you were not use you were using a condom one hundred percent of the time. Absolutely, I can't afford I can't afford another kid. I can barely take care of myself right now. You let couldn't afford kid. the first one. Why were you so stupid that you couldn't see that? Like I said, young, dumb, and full of it. Yeah. Just got myself caught up in a situation. I guess you have to learn lessons the hard way, and I did. So I've le learned my lesson, and that's why I don't, you know, have a serious girlfriend anymore. And I'm constantly, you know, just moving on to the next best best thing. But, Good. yeah, I mean, I, I could only imagine if I would have married her. I was two months away from getting married, and I actually lost $3,000 in deposits because I was like, you know what, I don't want to do this. I'm not going to go down this road. So I could only imagine if I would have married her how bad I would have been off. Of course. I mean, oh, I would have been hurting even worse. You know, I have a, a family business that, that I'm running, and, you know, it has the potential to make some good money, so I could only imagine what would happen. So, but I've been listening to you for a while now. I take your advice, and a lot of friends that listen to you, so I was hoping you could take me out old-school style. Yes, yes, I can. I have a feeling it's going to happen to him again. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Uh, Cena. Cena on the Tom Like Your Show. Hello. How you doing? I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. Hello? Yes. Hi, I'm good. I heard. All right, so, so I've been in high school. I just graduated this year in June. Uh, I've been going out with this girl since my junior year. Is, is that your and, girlfriend? Uh, yeah. Why do you have a girlfriend? Um, she's been a nice girl. So yeah, what? Why does she have to be your girlfriend? Why can't you just have a friend with benefits? Why can't she be a friend with benefits? Yeah. I don't know. She wanted to take a more serious road, and I don't know. I wanted to. Yeah, Women serious. always wanted to be more serious. Why couldn't you tell her you're too young to have a serious relationship? I don't know. I've always been swinging around. I just wanted to settle down for a little bit, but kind of. Why do you need to settle down? You're 17, for Christ's sake. I don't know. Close the car door, please. Yeah. Say what? Well, we just graduated and are two years in October, and we both live in L.A., go to the same high school. And in September, I'm going up to Santa Barbara, UCSB, and she's going to San Diego State. So what is your question? So what is, what is your advice to me on the situation? Break up now. Break up now? Yes, because she's going to do whatever she wants when she's down there. Oh, really? Yes, she is. Uh, when a guy invites her out to go to a movie, she's not going to ask your permission. She's going to do it. And she'll say, well, nothing happened. He's just a friend. We went to a movie. Then a friend is going to invite her to come to a kegger. You're not supposed to drink under age 21, but that's not going to stop somebody from inviting her to a party where there's booze. And she's going to go. And then you're going to find yourself on a Friday night calling her. 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. There'll be no answer on her cell phone. Because she is leaving home for the first time to a new zip code where nobody knows her. And for most women, what goes on the road stays on the road. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Yeah, I understand. On top of that, you are going to do the same thing. Yeah. Aren't you? Yes. Right. So it's time to stop the boyfriend-girlfriend stuff. Come on. It's like you're in the third grade. And it's time to be an adult when you go to college. And adults, when they go to college, have many experiences. They experiment. They have a good time. And they are not pathetic puppy dogs writing emails and text messages and blowing up girls' phones going, Where are you? It's Friday and I can't reach you. Don't be a pathetic moron. Hi. She's going to get banged by other guys. Hi. You understand that? I understand, Tom. You don't believe me, though, because you're in love, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. But this is what happens. Yeah. You are, you are going to be living 230 miles away from your girlfriend. 
Yeah. You understand that? Yeah. Or when you are 230 miles away from your girlfriend, what control are you going to have over her behavior? She knows you're not going to know what she's up to. Yeah. Right now, she'll say all the right, I'm going to miss you. let see each other every weekend. Then it'll be, oh, you know what? I can come up this weekend, but next weekend for sure. And then pretty soon it'll be, we don't have to go back and forth every weekend. You know I love you. And then it'll be the phone call, no answer, going to voicemail and all that. That's what happens. Yeah. So the trick here, Cena, is mm -hmm. to be an adult before she teach you the hard way how to be an adult. All right. Do you think when a man invites her to go out to a movie, she's going to say no? No. Do you think when a man takes her out to a movie, he's not going to try to put his hand on her boob? Well, if he does that, you know, he's going to have it coming for him. Don't be a jerk. You know what? You yeah. you you couldn't defend you couldn't defend forget it you know what uh, you I'm are not going to be away. you can't you have no control over this situation Z yeah. Row. yeah zero yeah. she's going to do exactly what she wants so are you yeah. going to find out the hard way by being a puppy dog mooning over her after she leaves wondering no. why she hasn't come to see you in six weeks. No. You know why she won't see him for six weeks? Because someone's going to be laying some pipe good. Right. And she won't want to hurt your feelings. She won't want to injure your male ego by telling you. So she won't tell you. Right. I'm trying Thanks, to save you. I'm trying to save you the embarrassment. Now, yeah. honestly, what are you actually going to do? Don't lie to me. Well... I told her we we're gonna have to go on a break for a while, you know, just so I can experience college life. So that's gonna happen. Yeah, and this is when. the end of it. This is the end of it. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you understand? I understand. Hang on a second, Mike. What did you want to say here to Cena? Uh, I want to tell this guy that he's a clown, man. You're an absolute retard if you stay with this chick and think that it's going to work. What, three hundred miles apart? I was in the Air Force. I went off to school, and I left my girl here. And uh, she went kite flying with a so-called friend. You know what happened at the kite flying? What? They boned. And you know what? You know what I could do about it? Nothing, because I was 300 miles away, which is going to be the same thing that's going to happen to you. I'm telling you, save yourself the heartache. You're going to be out there with a bunch of chicks anyway, man. Do what you want. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I, I'm trying to save you a heartache just yeah. like the good Lord Tom is saying. And I'm yeah. trying to tell you that you have so much going for you. You're only 17, man. You, there's parties, there's drinking, there's waking up in strange girls' beds and having to shuffle out. You've got so much to live for. Don't sell yourself short, please. It would be an embarrassment to you as a man. And stop with this idea that it's a break, okay? It's not a break. It's a break up. Yeah. You're not going to reconnect after college. Yeah. She is going to get boned by so many guys in college, you won't be able to keep up. Uh, she is new meat on a college campus. And when a yeah. girl goes to the college campus for the first time, all the girls who are freshmen, uh, the guys are like heat-seeking missiles. Yeah. And they'll be getting her first. Has she ever, has she ever had a drink before? Yeah, yeah, no, we both drink and stuff. You know, we both, I mean, right. I still go out to parties with my friends. Yeah, she well, she has to do with her friends. You think she's going to stop doing that in San Diego? No, no, she's not. She's going to parties. Oh, I just yeah. had a few too many drinks, and one thing led to another. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had sex with that guy. Better than the sex you and I ever had, and he was so much better looking than you do. And I'm so. Sorry! The Tom Likas Show.